Hi, I'm Art Bergeron and welcome to this month's Frank and Mary seminar. Uh, this month's seminar is probably regarding the topic that I get asked about most often, which is qualifying for Mass Health. And the point of this presentation is to make, have you understand that you can always qualify for Mass Health. And if you're older, it's probably going to be beneficial for you. Now, once again, you've heard me, if you've been here, you know that I always talk about my friends Frank and Mary and their kids Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. Um, and Frank and Mary's goal is to stay in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And eventually, if they've got any assets left, they want to give them to Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. And the question, and here are their assets. Um, if they live in the Metro West area, which is where I live and where I spend a lot of time, the, 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 the four boroughs, Marlboro, North Borough, South Borough, um, West Borough. Also, um, I do a lot of work in Hopkinton in this area. So, in this, so, so here are their assets. Their house is worth about $400,000. Frank's got an IRA of $200,000. Uh, they've got savings of about $200,000. Um, um, Frank's uh, Social Security is $2,000 a month. Mary's is $1,000, which is half of Frank's. Now, I also do a lot of work, as many folks know, on the islands. And so these presentations are also done in the islands. So I needed to do the modified island slide. Now, contrary to the views of many of the people out here in Metro West, on the islands, the income of the folks that are there is pretty much the same as it is here, right? Um, the difference is the house. So I'm assuming that on the island, your home is worth a million dollars. Now, maybe a little bit less than that, or a little bit more than that, but it's not way less than that. So you need to understand there are a couple of implications to that as we go along. So suppose Frank and Mary at home, and, and now Mary needs nursing home care. Um, well, as I've often talked about in my presentations, in that case, not to worry. The, um, Mary is going to want to qualify for Mass Health when she's in the nursing home because after 100 days, Medicare uh, will, or other health insurance won't pay for her stay. And once she's on private pay, it's going to be costing her, we're assuming here, $12,000 a month, but as we know, it's probably higher than that, right? So I'm assuming on the low side. Um, but the point is, Mary at that point could immediately qualify for Mass Health if she wanted to. Mary could qualify even though she owned the home, although if she owns the home, Mass Health isn't going to put a lien on it. Um, she has to have less than $2,000 in countable assets. But Frank, as the healthy spouse, can own the home, can have up to $137,400 in uh, countable assets, the other countable assets, cash, stock, bonds, like the money that he has in the bank or the IRA. And this number changes every year. And then he can have unlimited income. And therefore, if Mary needed to qualify for Mass Health, she could do so almost immediately. She could do that um, by transferring all of the, a the assets to Frank. And remember, there is no look back period regarding transfers to spouses. So everything I'm talking about can be done at the last minute. Um, she can transfer everything to Frank. Frank can keep, say, $100,000 of the cash or cash equivalent assets. The house at that point is all safe. Frank owns it. And if Mary dies, there's no, uh, there's no lien on the house. Um, Frank would take the rest of the money to buy an annuity of a very specific kind. The annuity needs to call for equal monthly payments over a term that is shorter than his actuarial life expectancy at that time. We're assuming in this case that Frank and Mary are 80 years old. So at that point, Frank's life expectancy would be a little under 10 years. Mary's life expectancy would be a little over 10 years. So the day after Frank buys that annuity, thereby shrinking his remaining assets below $137,400, Mary qualifies for Mass Health. Uh, if that, after that, Mary's income from pension and Social Security, so in this case it would be $1,000 a month, would go to the nursing home. Mass Health will pay all the rest. What kind of annuity does this have to be? It has to be a very specific kind. Uh, it has to call for equal monthly payments over a term that is shorter than Frank's actuarial life expectancy at that time, which as I mentioned was a little under 10 years. Um, he can't have the ability to cash it in early. Uh, he can name his kids, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. as the death beneficiaries. Uh, and, and there has to be a provision that says that if Frank, not if, if Frank needs to qualify for Mass Health later on, those annuity payments, once he is qualified for Mass Health, will be part of his income and will have to go to the nursing home. Now, there is a question. <clears throat> Mass Health has been taking the position that in this situation, if that annuity has been purchased and Frank later dies and there are still some payments that are owed, that Mass Health is entitled to those remaining payments 
to pay off Mary's bill at the nursing home. We don't believe that's the case. That case has gone, gone all the way up to the Massachusetts Supreme Judicial Court. My colleague at Myrick O'Connell, Lisa Neely, has actually just argued that case. And so we're all waiting for this result. Uh, and once again, stay tuned. As soon as we know the result, we'll, we'll let you all know. The case, if you want to look it up, is called Dermody, D-E-R-M-O-D-Y, versus uh, the Executive Office of, of uh, Health and Human Services, E-O-H-H-S. So, <clears throat> Frank and Mary's asset protection strategy. The point is, once all of this has been done and Mary is qualified for Mass Health, Frank would probably want to take the following steps. He would probably want to have a will that specifies that if he died, then those remaining assets of his, the house and the remaining cash, would, instead of going to Mary, in which case they would make her ineligible for Mass Health, would instead go into trust for the benefit of Mary. And they, she could have, he could have any of the kids or anybody else for that matter as the trustees. Trustee just can't be Mary. Mary would have, or the trustees would have the discretion to use any of this money at any time for Mary's benefit. Uh, the assets, those assets then would not be countable or lienable after Frank died. Uh, and all the remaining assets after Mary's death could go to the kids. The reason why I, I, I want to hold on this because th what, I've, what this describes is exactly the strategy that Frank and Mary should be doing whether or not Mary is in the nursing home. Because the things are structured this way and then one of, one, some, somebody dies um, unexpectedly or somebody dies, all of the assets are then going to be safe even if the spouse then later needs to qualify for nursing home care. So this, is kind of, this really is the basic strategy for Frank and Mary um, regarding their uh, asset protection estate planning, uh, whether Mary is in the nursing home or not. Now, uh, let's, let's take, make another assumption. Let's assume that Frank has died though and left all those assets to Mary because he didn't provide for this plan. And so now Mary has all of these assets and she is not necessarily heading for a nursing home now, but wants to protect them. What should she do? Because in this case, she can't do asset transfers at the last minute. What does she do? So what she needs to do, and once again, we're assuming if, if Mary is um, um, in Metro West that she's got that house and those same assets, her income has gone up. Um, the joint savings are now just her savings. Frank's IRA, IRA is now her IRA, and the income, her income has gone up to $2,000 per month because now she's getting Frank's. So what does she do? So in that situation, um, um, there is some, there's a plan that she wants to adopt. By the way, if she's on the, vine, if she's on the vineyard or Nantucket, um, she's got the same basic issues, but she's just got a much more valuable house. So in that situation, Mary has a very simple strategy if she wants to protect these assets. Give them away and wait five years. That's where the famous five-year look-back period comes in. While she can always give her assets to her spouse, if her spouse is dead um, she, it, and she wants to give away assets, those assets are subject to that five-year look-back period. So Mary has to give things away and wait five years. She doesn't have to give everything away. She just needs to give everything away that she wants to protect in the event that she later needs to qualify for mass health. Now, she doesn't have to create an irrevocable trust. That's kind of the thing that you hear about the most. She can give the assets away to anybody. Regarding the house, whoever she gives it to, she probably should retain a life estate in the property. That is the control of the property while she's alive. She would give whoever she's giving it to the remainder interest in the property. That is the interest that starts after she dies. She structures things that way and later needs to qualify for mass health after five years the interest that she gave away will no longer be countable or lienable. Her life estate will still will, will be lienable. So following her qualification for Mass Health, Mass Health will put a lien on her life estate. But when she dies, the life estate will evaporate and therefore so will the lien. So the kids will have the house um, lien free. Now, often I get the question in this case, but wait a minute, isn't there a gift tax? No. No, it, it, unless you have a, just a, a tremendous amount of money or have given away at this point over $12 million during your lifetime or, have the, or, or are going to, there is no gift tax that's irrelevant to you. So, you can, so Mary can do the, all of these steps and give these assets away at any time. Um, the question at that point is, 
who do you want to um, give it to? You could just give it to an individual. Uh, uh, Mary, in this case, would give it, just give it to her kids. Uh, or, if there's a partic or if she has one, only one child, this makes the easiest case in which she's just going to give it to Mary. Um, in many cases, though, in this situation, if there are multiple kids, and, and especially if any of the kids has a problem, has a creditor problem, maybe has a marriage problem, um, or there's one child that Mary really trusts more than the others, it's typically a designated child, uh, then Mary would create an irrevocable trust. Transfer all of those assets that she wants to protect to that irrevocable trust. In the case of the house, transfer the remainder interest to the irrevocable trust so that she would keep control of the house during her lifetime. Um, and then the trust would specify that the trustee, the most trusted child whom she named, could always make distributions to any one of the kids during Mary's lifetime. The trustee, it, Mary would, would trust the fact that the trustee in that case, if Mary needed assets, would transfer those assets to himself or herself as a beneficiary, and then turn around and give those assets to Mary or use them on her behalf. And once again, in all of those cases, there were no gift tax um, implications. There were no negatives to that. So you'd name the most trusted child, you'd specify there were distributions to the children, and then um, finally, the, the trust would say that following Mary's death, these assets could be distributed to the kids uh, in whatever shares that she thought was appropriate. Now, if she had structured things that way, um, then five years following the date on which she had transferred these assets into the trust, those assets would be safe, non-countable, and non-leanable. So the question then is, <clears throat> if you're Mary, and you haven't done that, and you're now in the nursing home, uh, or if you're Mary's kids, and you'd been telling Mary for years, Ma, you really ought to do something, and she didn't, and now she's in the nursing home. Uh, what, what can you do? Uh, and the answer typically is, there's nothing you can do at that point. Uh, you just need to spend down those assets to less than $2,000, at which point Mary will qualify for Mass Health, and Mass Health will put a lien on the house. Um, and that's not the best solution typically, but let me talk to you about that because Mary at this point can actually qualify for Mass Health. Remember, these are Mary's assets. Um, I'm just assuming for this example that she has the house and the house is worth $400,000. The IRA, the bank account, um, the total is $800,000 and then Mary's income is 2,000. And remember, once Mary has qualified for Mass Health, that 2,000 per month is gonna go to the nursing home and Mass Health will pay all the rest. So suppose Mary is now in the nursing home. What Mary, um, thinks would happen, um, and what the kids typically think would happen, is that he, we're assuming that the nursing home is costing $12,000 a year, um, or, or excuse me, $12,000 a month, or $144,000 a year. That's actually a little on the low side, um, but that'd be the assumption for today. Remember, Matt, Mary's income is $2,000 per month, um, so that um, you're just assuming that that's now going to the nursing home. So Mary's burn rate, um, that is the rate at which her savings are going to be depleted while she's in the nursing home on private pay, are going to be that $144,000 minus the, uh, the um, $24,000 or $120,000 a year. That's the rate at which her assets are going to be depleted. So um, the kids are assuming now that over the next five years, basically, those assets are going to get depleted by five times that amount or $600,000. And then at the end of the day, there's only going to be $200,000 left. So, so now that we've talked about what Mary and her kids think would happen, let's talk about what would really happen. What would really happen is that at this point, Mary could qualify for Mass Health as long as they, the kids apply for Mass Health on her behalf. Uh, she could do that by saying, or having the kids say, that she intends to return home, even if there's no chance that she could return home. Um, Therefore, the house would be safe, uh, with one exception, and we're going to talk about that at the end. Um, and then she would take the money that she has, the $400,000, and put the money into a D4C pool trust, or use the money to buy an annuity, or both. Once she has done those things, Mary will qualify for Mass Health. At that point, Mass Health, though, will have a lien on all of these assets in order to get repaid following Mary's death. So the question then would be, well, if that's the case, then why is she doing this, right? Because if, she, if she's not really safe, if MassHealth is going to have this lien, 
The answer is this. The key is to understand that once Mary is on Mass Health, Mary's cost of being in the nursing home will drop from the private pay rate to the mass health rate. So, for example, remember we, we used the example of Mary being in the nursing home and spending about $12,000 per month on private pay. Um, the actual cost will be whatever the, that particular nursing home charges. In that situation, that would cost her $144,000. Once she is on mass health, though, that the rate, the mass health rate for that same bed at that same nursing home is only going to be $7,000 per month, right? Um, and mass health is only, mass health's lien is only going to be for the amount that mass health would be paying based on that bed rate. Now remember, in Mary's case, Mary has $2,000 a, a month in social security income. So as long as she can pay that other $5,000 a month, right? There will be no mass health lien because, mass, because Mary will be paying the entire $7,000 a month. Even if Mary were only paying her social security to the nursing home, the mass health lien would only be for that remaining $5,000 a month times 12 would be $60,000. So, so in that case, you going to that same scenario, if Mary lived for five years, at the end of those five years, Mary would only have, have um, uh, Mary's loss or to, to regarding paying for, for re repaying Mass Health would only be that $300,000. Mary's kids would end up getting $500,000 back at the end of Mary's life. So the question then is, Mary will always want to qualify for Mass Health. How does she do that? First, by using the D4C pooled trust. What are they exactly? So the D4, a D4C pool trust is one that is authorized under federal law uh, as a fund that can hold funds for the benefit of a senior, even though the, those funds are not countable in terms of qualifying that senior for Mass Health. There are, there are five of these in Massachusetts. If you want to learn more about them, you want to just simply Google the term pooled trust, P-O-O-L-E-D, trust. Um, there are five of them. We use the one that's at the bottom of this list called Plan of Massachusetts and Rhode Island simply because we've, we've, it, it's the most convenient for us and they have rates that are comparable to everybody else. The way that the pool, and by the way, you can also Google their uh, website, Plan of Massachusetts and Rhode Island. The way that the pool trust works is whatever funds are put into the pool trust under Massachusetts regulations are not countable. They're not subject to the five-year look-back period. By the way, we are one of only about a dozen states where that is the case. In many other states, this strategy is not, does not work. Uh, so there is no look back period. Uh, Mass Health has proposed that there be some maximum to the amount that gets put into that pool trust. They proposed a maximum of $750,000. However, that regulation was proposed like three years ago. It still hasn't gone into effect. We're not anticipating that it's going to go into effect, right? Uh, but in any event, it wouldn't affect Mary because she's not anywhere near that cap. Once again, Mass Health would have a lien on the remainder of these funds following Mary's death, but only for the amount that Mass Health was owed on account of the payments made on Mary's behalf to the nursing home. The there are some costs involved in the, in the, uh, the D4C. Uh, there's an application cost, of, of a, of, and that varies among the D different D4Cs. There's an annual service fee. Um, uh, the, the D4Cs will charge for basically managing Mary's money just the way a private money manager would, and that's typically about 1% per year. Uh, and then at the end, after Mary has died, before a final distribution is made, typically the D4C will be allowed to keep some percentage of the funds remaining in the D4C. The D4C funds can be used to do anything that would benefit Mary. In this particular case, Mary still has a house. So one of the things that could be places the funds could be used would be to maintain the house, to pay for the taxes, the insurance, the other upkeep. It could, the funds could also be used to buy equipment for Mary, to improve her life, to buy better furniture at the room, to buy a better wheelchair than the ones that really, that if you go to the nursing home, it, it, oftentimes some of the saddest times that I've had in a nursing home of times when I'm going to visit folks and I see these people in the hall of the nursing home and they're just kind of slumped over on their chair and they're sleeping. Now the reason for that is because 
that chair wasn't designed to be slept in. She's, the, those folks are using chairs that were designed to move people from one room to another. For, for a much higher cost, you can buy Mary a truly great chair in which she can sleep, just to improve her life. So the point is, these funds can be used for anything that would really benefit Mary's life. Uh, to buy her better food, to cater, have catered meals on occasion, to improve her privacy, to do any number of things. The point is that those funds can be used to help Mary's life and then following her death, um, and it, it, to the extent that, that they don't need to be used to pay the Mass Health lien, they're going to get given to Mary's children. Um, finally, the annuity. The annuity, um, the, here are the, ru the rules of the annuity are the same as the rules that would have applied if Frank had bought an annuity. The annuity has to call for equal monthly payments over a term that is shorter than Mary's actuarial life expectancy. The annuity has to be irrevocable and unamendable. Um, the annuity, and, and by the way, in this case, we're assuming that Mary's, Mary is 80 years old, so her life expectancy is about 10.1 years. Once again, there is a lien on these funds um, to the extent that, they, that the payments have not been made at the time of Mary's death and the interest rates are not great. They're about 1%. So you'd never buy this annuity, except if you wanted to qualify for mass health. The point, though, is after Mary has bought that annuity, thereby, once again, spending her money down to below $2,000, she can qualify for mass health. Um, so one possible strategy in Mary's case is she could blend these two ways of qualifying for mass health. She could take, say, $300,000 out of her, her $400,000, use those funds to buy an annuity that will pay her $5,000 per month. That $5,000 plus her Social Security check of $2,000 is going to mean Mary's income is going to be $7,000 per month. That's the same amount as Mary's nursing home bill, $7,000 per month at the Mass Health rate. Therefore, in this situation, MassHealth will not be paying anything to the nursing home every month. And when Mary dies, there will be no lien. There will be no lien, which means um, the, the extra remaining funds, to the extent that there are extra funds in the D4C, and the house will be safe, will be safe, and can, be dis can then be uh, distributed to the kids following Mary's death. Now, there's only one caveat to this if you're on the islands. And that is that, that, as I've said, Mary can qualify for MassHealth uh, as long as she says she intends to return home. MassHealth, though, has imposed a cap on the equity that she can have on that house in order for, to, for her to save it and be able to, to keep it and not have to sell it when she goes to the nursing home. And that cap is presently $955,000. So if Mary has a house worth a million dollars, and she, has, and she hasn't got a mortgage outstanding so that she's got equity of a million dollars, Mary has a problem. The way to solve that problem, uh, or the easiest way to solve that problem, would be for Mary to have a reverse mortgage on the property, to not have withdrawn any money from that reverse mortgage, but to have the ability to withdraw money uh, on the reverse mortgage. If she has the reverse mortgage available, then, and then she goes into the nursing home to try to qualify for mass health. At that point, she could pull out uh, an amount or by borrowing an amount off of that reverse mortgage that would cause the equity in her house to shrink from a million dollars to a million dollars minus the amount that she had pulled out. So she could do, get a reverse, she could certainly get a reverse mortgage from a reverse mortgage company and have that available. A second technique which would probably be easier in this case, would be to have this done all, done all done privately and to have the reverse mortgage be a loan, be a loan from, from her children to her, supported by a reverse mortgage from her back to her children. So the reverse mortgage could just sit on the property until, th in, in case this occurred, if this occurred at that point, the, the three kids, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr., would then give Mary enough money to get the equity in her house down below the magic number, $955,000. As soon as they did that, that house would be, would be non-countable uh, and, and Mary could qualify for mass health. The, the amount that Mary got given would then get added to the amount of cash that she had. Remember the $400,000, which would then either increase the amount going to the D4C 
or increase the amount that was being used to pay for the annuity. Once Mary had died, remember there isn't going to be a lien in this case because of the annuity payments. That means the house, as well as any remaining funds in the D4C pool trust is gonna be available to pay back for the kids. Um, once again, there, is no, there, there will be no lien, the house will be safe, and the remaining um, D4C money will be safe. Remember though, remember though, that um, if you're on the islands, you need, to, you need to have this other option available if the house is worth more than $955,000. So, remember, Mary can always qualify for Mass Health. It would be better if she qualified uh, early, um, because if, she, if there were Frank and Mary, and Frank died first, all of the assets were in trust for Mary's benefit, or if she were single and she had given away those assets, and waited five years, then all of those assets would be safe. But even if she doesn't do that, it still makes a lot of sense for her to qualify for Mass Health. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the presentation. If you have any questions, please, you can always uh, find this on your local cable station, uh, or you can Google us at the Frank and Mary uh, website, Elder Law Frank and Mary. Uh, and remember, the goal of all of this is to, is to just get a good night's sleep uh, I hope you enjoyed the presentation. We look forward to talking to you next month. Thank you.